So this lesson, we are going to be connecting to a spreadsheet from a HTML web application using JavaScript fetch to connect to an endpoint that we're going to be establishing as a web app URL endpoint using Google Apps Script and then retrieve back the contents from the spreadsheet using JavaScript once we've made the connection. So this is an example of the output and this content is actually coming directly from the spreadsheet. So you can see we've got some of the content here and it's going to match whatever we've got as content within the page. So if we were to update the ID, for instance, and we go back and we reload the page content, that page content as well updates because this is coming directly from the Google Sheet. So we're going to be using a setting up a web API with Google Apps Script and then outputting content from the sheet to an endpoint and then using that endpoint that we're creating with JavaScript to output it to our web page. Log into your Google account and then go over to the drive and we're going to need a sheet that we're going to be using as a base for our web application and this is going to be a bound script so we're going to write the script directly within the Google Sheet. So within the drive select new and under new select Google Sheets and this is going to create the brand new Google Sheet and you can give it a name. I'm going to call it Web API. And then we'll have some content here. So let's have an ID. And these are going to be the main headings. So uh, maybe ID title. And then whatever content we want to output. And let's also include a category and a status. So we can set the different statuses to either show it or hide it. So that first row is going to be all of the headings for the content. And maybe if we want to output some jokes, we can just give it a name of jokes. And then let's select and create a second one. And then this can be the categories. And we'll list out the categories dynamically and pulling that information from what we've got within that first sheet. So let's add in some content here. We'll just call it vampire joke. And then the content. And we'll ask, answer one more well, we'll have an answer there. And then this will be, and you can of course add in your own content as needed and having the status as a Boolean value. And let's add in a few other ones and set that to true as well. And we don't actually need the question mark at the end as we're gonna add that in with our code. And this can actually be the response. So we've got content response category. And then for status, whether we're showing the joke or not. So we'll try to make this as dynamic as possible. So for the categories, we're actually going to list out what the unique values are from the jokes sheet. So you can do that with a formula where you select the unique. And then for unique, it's going to ask you to select the range that you want to return back the unique content on. So that means that you can go over and you can just select that being the range for the unique. So whatever we've got here under the categories. And we just got to move that over. And then so going back to category, that's going to return back the unique range. And we want to start it actually at E and end at whatever the end of E is. So that's going to automatically return back all of the values. And then you can set that unique category to the top left hand corner. So it's automatically going to list out category as one of them, but that's okay because we're going to still use that as the heading for whenever we're pulling out the list of categories that are available within the spreadsheet. So next up, we want to start with the app script. Where we're going to open up the app script and start writing some code in order to put out a web application. So under tools, select the script editor. And because this is going to be a bound script, we're able to open up the script directly. I'm going to make my screen slightly larger so the code is a little bit easier to read. And then for the project name, we're going to call it Jokes API. And then just give it a name so that we can easily reference it within our web pages and also easily see that 
where we've got whenever we go into the script list where we've got the web APIs and then if we go into the scripts we can see that we've created a brand new project and reference that project by the name. So what we want to do is we want to take the content that we have within the spreadsheet and we want to output that within a web app format so that we can use that eventually as an endpoint and pull the data back in our web application. So we'll start out by our first function. We're just going to call this our tester function so that we can build the data that we want to output into the web app. So first we want to select whatever our spreadsheet is that we want to use. And this we can do by using the spreadsheet app class. And then we can open by ID. So if it's not a bound one, we can open it by ID. So this also gives us an option to have different spreadsheet IDs. So we don't necessarily need to use the one that the script is attached to. And you can also select it by whatever the active spreadsheet is. So that's going to be the one that it's bound to. So I'm actually going to use the ID and set the ID as a global value. So this is just going to be our main sheet ID. And this is going to be a string value that we're going to be expecting within the parameters. So wrapping it with the quotes. And then we can use the sheet ID this way where we can select the sheet that we want to use and this is going to be the actually the spreadsheet so I'll use a variable of SS and then to get the actual sheet data we're using the spreadsheet object and getting the sheet so we can open the sheet so we can use the get sheet by name method in order to open up the sheet by its name and we gave it a name of jokes earlier. So let's reference that same sheet object as jokes. And then that gives us access to the sheet object within a variable called sheet. So if we want to actually get the rows of data, we can do that with another variable. And we're getting the sheet object. And then using the get data range, which will select all of the active content within that current sheet object. So it's going to automatically select all of the cells that have content within a square format. So if you had some content down here, it would be selecting all of those within the sheet data. So that's automatically selecting the range that of the data that we want to use. And then lastly, let's use the get values method in order to return back the values. And then within the logger log, Let's see what we've got so far for rows. When we run the tester function, we're going to be connecting to that sheet by its ID. And that means that we also need to accept permissions for the Google Apps Script to operate. So we need to make sure that the account that we're using has access to the spreadsheet. So preferably edit permissions in order to interact with the content within the spreadsheet. And then we accept the permissions. We see the permissions that have been shared. We have also an option if we go to the myaccount.google.com permissions, we can then remove out any permissions that we've provided. And that's where giving a good name to the Google script is important so that you can easily reference it within the account as having provided permissions to that particular API. And this is the one that we're creating locally, so Google hasn't had a chance to vet it. That's where we're getting all of these warning messages. So once we've approved the permissions, hit allow. That's going to allow the script to run, to connect to the spreadsheet, and return back the data within a nested array. So each row is a separate array separated by the data within each column. So each row will be separate as an array within one main array of all of the content data that's being returned back from the spreadsheet data. So that's how you can get the data from the spreadsheet and prepare to use it within a web application. So let's output that content into our application. So creating a web app. So I'm going to create a separate function. And this function is going to be the one that's going to output the content. So displaying the content. So we can output content. 
and it's going to require some parameters. So the data that we want to output is going to be contained within that output content. And then here we can return the output content function with the rows data contained within there. So we're basically passing the information that we've got from the spreadsheet as a array, a nested array, into the output content. And this is where we output the content into the page. So let's first we'll construct our temporary object. And then this object, we're going to use the JSON stringify to turn it in a stringified format. So we're wrapping it with the rounded brackets. And then this is where our object is going to get constructed. So let's add in to the object status. So once we've successfully connected, we can return back that content. And then for the data itself, that's just going to currently be output as data within that same object. I'll move the editor up so it's easier to see. And then what we want to do is we want to return the content service where we're creating text output and that content is coming from that temporary object which is stringified. So it's coming from that temporary string object. And now we're ready to deploy it as a web application. And for that, we're going to need to have a separate function. That's the do get function. And what do get is this allows us to run a web application. So we can also pick up the parameters, the event parameters using the E variable. And so what we're going to do here is we want to ultimately return the text output. So we can copy what we have within tester and return the output contents into the web application. And then we can move the tester all the way down because this was just our initial testing function. Because if we try to run the do get, it will run, but we're not going to display any content. So we want to output and display the content. In order to do that, we have to deploy the web application. And that's done with the top right hand button where we can deploy the project. We can also do test deployments. And you could run a brand new deployment. So that will create an executable web application. So in the select type, we select web app. We give it a name, what account we want to use to execute the application, and then who has access. So this is who is going to be able to access the web application. If you have an organization account, you're going to have the organization option as well. So you can select only yourself, anyone with a Google account, and then anyone is just allowing it to be an open API. And in order to make the web connection with the do get from the front end code, we're just going to have to keep it as open to anyone with the web URL can access the content. Once you deploy the application, you're going to get a deployment ID as well as the URL for the application. So you can click copy and that will copy the web URL for the ID. And you can paste it in within the browser and we see that we're getting this as the response. So this is an endpoint that we can use and connect to that endpoint using our JavaScript application. So the next part is that we're going to use the JavaScript in order to connect to it using fetch. So go ahead and open up your web browser. The one that I'm using is going to be Visual Studio Code. But you can use any web browser that you want to make use of. And then within here, I'm going to set up a div. So it's just a regular blank HTML page. And I'll just do the script tags directly on page. And we'll set up our endpoint. So just call it URL. And that's going to be the endpoint that we just established and that we just built with our Google Apps Script code. We're going to also set the view to wrap the view. And of course, we don't have anything happening quite yet. So what we want to do is we want to create a function where we're going to load data. And this is going to make a fetch request to the URL 
and then return back the data that's contained within there. So setting that up, so fetch to the URL. The fetch by default is gonna use the get method. So we're connecting to the URL. And once that connection has been established, then we wanna return back the content. And we're returning it back as text content right now. And the next promise is gonna retrieve that content as data, and then we can make use of it within the code. So right now, what we wanna do is just output whatever we're getting response back from the server. So let's uh, minimize that and we'll go over to the web page. I'm using a live server, so I'm just gonna open up this page on the live server and then we'll check the console to see if we've got a response from the server. And if we establish the response from the server, we need to load the load data function, so invoke that function. And we can see that the data gets returned back and this is within a string format. So ideally what we want is we want this to be in a JSON format and then return it back as JSON. So we can update our front end code to return back as JSON. And I'm gonna just include this function to get invoked within the JavaScript code as the page loads. So we're able to make that connection and return the data back as JSON data. So this is within a JavaScript object, which is gonna make it easy to loop through the contents and then output that content onto the page. So we're gonna do also a little bit more structuring with the content coming from the Google Web Apps side. But this is just a quick example of how we can make a connection and get the live data that's sitting within the spreadsheet pull it back into our web page. And then also, of course, if we want to, we could output that content on the page. So before we conclude, we'll quickly set up a way to output the content. So document, and then using query selector, I'm gonna select the element with a class of output. And this will give me a container as we get the data back. And the data is within a data array. So that means that if we want to access the data, the structure is this, that we go for each one of those items. And if we want to console log out each one of the rows from the spreadsheet, we can do that. And this is returning back each one of the rows. And if we want to output that content, then we can select and output each one of the items of content into the output area. So next we're set up an HTML object, and this is just gonna be blank. And then as we loop through, we'll set the HTML to equal, and I'm just using the back ticks there. So we've got all of the element ID, and I'm using the template literal, so that's the dollar sign in the brackets to get the content. And then as we loop through, I'm gonna take output and inner HTML and add to the inner HTML whatever we've got for the HTML object. And then here, let's just set a new line. So that's gonna output that content onto the page. And we actually need to do this part here. Well, we'll just output it directly. So just remove that line. And we don't actually need the HTML. And we are gonna be doing some more structure to the data afterwards. So this was just simply outputting the ID. And then if we wanna output the actual question, so that's gonna be with an ID of two. And then the response is gonna have the ID of three for the index value. So that's outputting that live content coming from the spreadsheet. So coming up next, we're gonna apply some more structure to the web application and the data that's being outputted.